Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Hypermind Vanilla Season 3. Here we are. You know, I could probably stop saying Season 3 by now. You guys know it's Season 3. Anyway, we're here on the Hypermind Vanilla server, and we are at the skeleton grinder that we were starting what was it a couple episodes ago so we had the little prank the sheep wars stuff going on there might still be retaliation going on who knows from last week's episode because i just finished recording that and so we're gonna have to release that anyway the reason i'm getting a head start on recording this one is because we are going to be taking a while to do this farm it's going to be a few jump cuts so Anyway, we are going to work on the mechanics of this skeleton grinder. I promised that we were going to do this, so today we're going to get into it. So let's stop chatting and let's just get into this thing. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to actually work on this skeleton grinder. Again, we're going to be doing this not as an XP farm, but as a, a regular bones and arrows drop farm. The way we're going to be doing that is using this uh, new mechanic, magma blocks. A couple episodes ago, I got, I went around and got nine of them, and then I started to actually do some testing in my creative testing world. Let's see if I can get in. Oh, good shot. Awesome. Couldn't have planned that better if I had tried. All right, so I started out doing some testing in my creative testing world, and it turns out my initial design was not going to be sufficient for what we needed to do. And um, so, so we, I kind of had to go back to the drawing board, but it still ultimately involves putting... Uh, putting some fences down and then moving all of the skeletons into the center by using water streams. So that's what we're going to be or what we're working on right here. We're going to open all of these to the inside and then we'll see about knocking out those. Okay, now I do need to go up and knock out the ones right below the spawner. So we've got to be kind of careful about that. Okay, good. I don't want to kill this spawner. That would be a bad thing. So, so there we go. All right. So I've got, I've got that going, and now I can just go ahead. Um, you know what? I will probably leave a small area, just like that, just in case we get a spawn or two. I don't want a flood of these guys coming through and uh, just absolutely wrecking things. So we are going to put a plug back in there like so. All right, next order of business, we need to actually get our, our water. Did I have, I had an infinite water source. It was right there and I had to dig further down. And so Hmm, I failed to think of that when I was digging additional. Uh, you know what? I've got, I've got ice. I think we can manage with that. How many more buckets? We just got the one bucket. No, there's another bucket. Okay. So what we will do is put, oh, and a restart in 10 minutes. Well, what we're going to do is get this going. Okay, so now we'll do the interpearl trick again. Let's see if we can get just as good of a throw. Okay, not, not the greatest, but not bad either. So what we're going to do is come out a couple of blocks. We don't want to make an infinite water source all the way across this whole thing. And so we will go like that, and then we can refill the buckets. There we go. And like so. And then in the corners, what we'll do is put one right there. And that's going to make sure that we push all of the skellies into the center. And we don't get any infinite water pooling going on. And what, right there. Okay, fill them up again. One there. And what's that one? Right 
there and right there. Fill that there and one more. And then we'll refill that one because... Oh, no, no, no. We weren't quite done. We have this side to do. Grab that and that. All right. It looks like we're funneling everything to the center. Okay, that's a good thing. And that means that at least that part is done. The funneling is done. And now what we need to do is work on the drop shoot area. So I'm going to go off camera for a bit to at least get the scaffolding done. And then I'll bring you back and we'll get, well, I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking for that. And uh, rest assured, I have tested this out in my creative testing world. Some of you might say, don't do that soap. Just, just play around with it on camera. I would have done that here, but it, it ended up, um, it, it, it was a good thing because the original design I had was not going to work. So what we were going to do, uh, you know what? I'll explain that once we get back from the break. Well, taking a look at the latest progress, you might wonder why in the world did you take a cut? Well, I, um, I don't really know. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I thought that it would be harder to get the scaffolding going for this than it is proved to be. So anyway, sorry for that. We didn't get much done in between, but what I did want to do is I wanted to bring you in for laying this thing out. So first what we're going to do is we're going to put these magma blocks here on the sides like so, and we'll do that on the side behind me as well. It's just that's my only avenue of escape. And when you walk on these things, look, yeah, you take damage. It's almost like fire damage, but I want to make sure that I get past that without too much trouble. The next order of business is to put in some of these iron trap doors. And what these are going to do is encourage these skeletons to not jump. So we're going to have water directing them into, uh, into these areas right here, right above the magma blocks. They're going to start taking damage and uh, but they're going to be in the water. And so they'll be jumping. And I want to make sure that they don't jump because I want them to stay on the magma blocks for as long as possible. We don't want too many skeletons hanging out um, because that would potentially cause lag. We want to get these things out of here as quick as possible so we have maximum efficiency on the bone and arrow production. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing there. On the outside, what we're going to do, just to give you an idea of what's going on here, at, uh, let's see, we want it at this height. Can we reach? Yes, we can. Awesome. And we don't need that anymore. We can bring down these stone slabs. We're going to put these across like so. That's going to trap those skeletons in place. We're going to do that all the way around. I'll bring you back once we've got that done. All right, we are back and it is time to put in the water. Let's see if we can get pretty good vantage point here we want to get the right center block right there see that okay so now what we're gonna do uh, that will do is push all the skeletons into one of these four chambers now I did notice that with the magma blocks when you have water going over it it's going to make that sound and actually take away the water a little bit so I'd originally figured some some water currents pushing the skeletons off of there. So we were going to have what a nine or a three by three area. And then the skeletons were going to be dropping onto that. We'd have uh, water pushing them and pushing their drops to one area. And that was not very efficient. The skeletons kept jumping. That's one of the uh, changes I came up with right here. So instead of having one side of the farm, be where they uh, where all the drops come we're gonna have four sides of the farm we're gonna collect them all in one spot which is what we're gonna work on next so what I need to do is kind of like last time we're gonna build a platform underneath here and we're going to be catching the drops see what's gonna happen those skeletons should drop down they're gonna get pushed into the uh, above those magma blocks and then when they finally uh, die due to the damage 
the bones and arrows are going to flow right off. The water is going to push them right off and right through that channel right there that we've laid with the stone slabs above. So it's going to block them in, but let their drops go through. We're going to collect those in a little ice stream down below. And, and then we're going to carry that to uh, an item elevator. So first things first, we need a little gathering platform and we've got plenty of packed ice to handle that. So let me take care of that and I'll bring you right back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have gotten that area done right here. You can see we've got a little water stream that is directing all the items that are gonna be falling down onto some packed ice. And then what I've got it doing right now just a real uh, kind of a dummy setup and it's directing all the items into a couple of hoppers here and then we will eventually run them into this particular chest and now um, that's uh, that's not the final setup that's not what I want but I don't know how much further we're going to get in terms of the overall item storage and uh, handling stuff for this episode. Instead, what I want to do is primarily focus on the actual drop area or killing area, and uh, we're going to go from there. So, the next order of business is right now we've got this thing completely turned off. We've got torches all around. We've got those blocks up in the uh, upper part right there. You can kind of see it's uh, what is that cobblestone that I've got some lamps on or or torches on. And that's keeping this spawner from actually spawning anything. So what I want to do is get a more formalized on-off switch. We're going to get some of these uh, lanterns here. We're going to put those up in the ceiling. We're going to run some redstone. And then we'll have some form of an on-off switch for that. So let me get that worked out. And I'll bring you back and show you what I've done. I promised a method of turning on some lights. So here we go. It's rather simple. And it doesn't fully cover the entire area, but it's going to do just enough in case we need to get in here and do some maintenance work. Again, I don't foresee that being the case. We're not going to make some special on-off switch. Who knows? Who knows down the road? We'll, we'll see. But we can just do that. And it turns off the lights, and there we go. But our next order of business is that we need to actually come in here and turn off or get rid of the torches here and I'm not going to put my pick there just in case I happen to kill the spawner we definitely don't want to kill the spawner so no I needed I needed you okay let's do that there and then we'll come around you know what I'm gonna have to get rid of that and then like so and like so and we'll put that back on and come around here knock this out and we'll go collect all of that stuff a little later and then we'll get this one yep there we go and knock that out now just a note that we are not going to be fully efficient for the time being until we finish the outer covering along here and the reason why is pretty simple um, I I have decided to put glass around here yes and you might have been wondering all along why in the world are you gonna do glass and that's because I have in mind a design for the outer fringes of this thing so what I want to do did I get both sides of that? Did I put glass? Yeah, I put glass there. Okay, so what I what I wanted to do, I have no idea what just happened there, hmm. is um, I want an outer covering as well as an inner covering. Oh, I know. I was just recording something in 1.8.9, and when I come back into 1.10, it turns on auto jump. I don't like auto jump. Definitely not a fan. I'm not a fan. All right. Anyway, what we need to do is come around and we'll get rid of our scaffolding as we go back this way. And 
Yeah, so the inner inner section is going to be this glass cube, or, well, it's cuboid, I guess. And then what we're going to do is have an outer covering that is going to have those, you know that trick where you just put in slabs and it kills the light levels? Yeah, we're going to do that on the outskirts of this thing. And so you'll be able to AFK actually right next to this and watch the skellies drop into their ultimate demise. Perhaps that's a little, little I don't know, disturbing, but... It is what it is. It's what I envisioned for this project. Yep, server restart in five minutes. What I need to do real quick is uh, pop back up here. And we'll turn this thing on just to give it a go. Oh, I do need to put some torches up here. And again, we're going to be killing our potential spawn rates. But for the time being, I think... I think we're fine. We'll see. Yes. Okay, so we are getting some skeletons. This is a good thing. So you heard them. Let's see if we can get some more. Yeah, you hear that? Okay. So we'll see if any drop. I hope they do. Drop, drop, drop. More. Hmm. Maybe it's just taking a while. It could be taking a while. If you have any sort of light in here, uh, even even if it's good enough for them to spawn, it's gonna take. It's gonna make the game take a little bit longer to calculate the whole thing. So you can see them taking damage, and watch as as they finish taking damage. There we go. Okay, and their drops come down here go into the water and ice stream and then we pick them up oh and they can see me from there that's fine but we've got some drops coming in and this is a good thing it means that our skeleton grinder is well it's not perfect but we are well on our way and ladies and gentlemen that is actually all I have time for in this episode so next time we are here I am going to be working on the overall outer design for this thing and it may require pushing back these walls a little bit more. I think we may not have gotten enough, but uh, but who knows, who knows. I, I've still been playing with that design. I did go into my creative testing world to play with that design some simply because we did have to redo uh, the kill chamber here a little bit more. Can he see me? He should be able to see me from there. I guess he can't. Hmm. Anyway, that's going to be it. We've actually got skellies coming in. This is this is awesome. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like is always appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, think about subscribing. So you are up to date with everything going on on the channel. But that's going to be it for now. Again, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time here on the Hypermind server. Bye-bye.